Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Elizabeth and today I'm going to talk to you about my stage three thyroid cancer diagnosis. Really the main reason that I wanted to share this with you is when I originally was diagnosed and when I sort of went looking for information about thyroid cancer and about how people had dealt with it, I couldn't find any resources at all. So I want to share my diagnosis and then this allows me to share a little bit more about some of the lifestyle changes that I've made and things that I do to work with this cancer. So back in December 2020, I had my third baby and I was tired after having him, but no more tired than I had been with my other children. And around about the May of 2021, so he was around about five months old, I started to feel more and more tired until one night I collapsed. Now, there's a stage here where I went to a lot of doctors and I'm not gonna dwell a lot on that because I kept being told the same thing. I would go to a doctor, I would say, I don't feel well. They would send me away and say, you look perfectly healthy. Now, I actually developed a lump on my neck in this time. Now, what typically happens with thyroid cancer is the lump grows out. So if you Google pictures of a thyroid cancer lump, they come out like that. And mine was like quite flat and coming around. So I took myself to the hospital and the hospital said really quickly, there's something happening here with your thyroid, go back to your doctor. I went through even more doctor's appointments until eventually I decided that I was going to request some blood tests. And I requested a thyroid panel. Now in the UK, when a thyroid panel is taken, it only actually looks at two things, TSH and T4, both of which are not adequate enough to provide a full picture of the thyroid, but I didn't know that at the time. So I had a blood test done, which showed that I was severely hypothyroid, and it actually showed me to have a really high inflammation marker. So an inflammation marker would be, there's quite a few, but one of them, the most easiest to test is called CRP, C-reactive protein. So I was really hypothyroid, but I hadn't been five months earlier when I had my baby Dax. And I also had this really high inflammation marker. The doctor suggested to me that I take levothyroxine, which is a thyroid medication for hypothyroidism. I actually didn't want to take the medication for quite a few reasons, which I will probably delve into um, at a later date. But I was really concerned with how had I been hypo not been hypothyroid and suddenly was. I set out to start looking at healing my thyroid and nothing was really making a difference. I did some Hashimoto's protocols. I uh, started taking different herbs. I was using essential oils, making different dietary changes and I wasn't feeling any better and the swelling on my neck wasn't changing. So I then decided to pay and go to a private doctor. Um, and this is where things started to accelerate a little bit for me. So I went in and I took a request of the blood test that I wanted. Um, and what I could see was I had um, still high inflammation. I still had some um, hypothyroidism showing up, but I also had thyroglobulin antibodies. Now, thyroglobulin antibodies are often associated with Hashimoto's, but the lifestyle changes I had made for the Hashimoto's weren't making any difference whatsoever. So I got in front of an endocrinologist next. The endocrinologist went through my blood work. He told me he didn't think there was anything wrong with my, um, anything particularly wrong with my blood work and that I should take the levothyroxine. So at the end of the endocrinologist appointment, he offered me an ultrasound scan and it was the same um, sort of conversation where the ultrasound technician said to me, oh, you know, you look so well, let's have a quick look. I'm sure it's just a little bit of postpartum thyroiditis. And she started to scan my neck and immediately said, okay, this doesn't look right. She just said your thyroid is actually doesn't even really look like a thyroid. So she moved me straight away onto back onto our national health system. Uh, so I had to wait about three weeks then to go in to the ear, neck and throat department. 
They took me in again and they started to scan my thyroid. Now, the gentleman that scanned it said to me straight away, your thyroid isn't even the right color. Uh, he said it's covered in nodules. I can't even count how many. One of the nodules looked to have a blood supply and that's really what they're looking for. The blood supply is where it start, they start to think, okay, this potentially could be cancerous. And I also had what they described as a finger growing off my thyroid. Now, I later discovered that that's actually called an extra thyroidal extension. So the same day that they did that scan, they actually took a biopsy. So they took a biopsy of inside my thyroid um, because what they found around this side of my neck, the left side of my neck, was they found uh, swelling of the lymph nodes. So the cervical chain coming up here, there was a number of swollen lymph nodes. And one of um, the most common stages of cancer for thyroid cancer after it's come out of the thyroid is often that it will move into either both sides of the neck into the lymph nodes or one side. My biopsy came back inconclusive. So they brought me back again three weeks later to do it again. So I went through exactly the same thing, the biopsy of it. This time they gave me a CT scan to scan my chest. So at this point it was starting to get pretty real for me. And I, I knew this would have been early June. I knew that at some point they were gonna come back and tell me it was cancer. My family was still convinced it wasn't. Um, you know, I probably just had a swelling. They brought me back for a third biopsy and this time it was still inconclusive. And so they, on this appointment, put a camera down my throat. So they went up through my nose and down my throat to check if there was anything happening in my throat, if any swelling or growth had moved out into my throat. At the end of that appointment, they told me that they were almost certain it was thyroid cancer, but that they, could, they couldn't get anything conclusive to prove it. So they then moved me on to another hospital in the UK, which specialized in cancer and also was special, specialized in thyroid cancer and cancers of the ear, neck and throat. But I waited until September to go to there. So this has now been going on uh, three and a half months. I went there in September um, and I'd done this all on my own because it was during the pandemic. So I'd done every appointment on, on my own and my partner came to this one with me and they took me in and then they said, okay, we will get you an answer today, no matter what. So I had um, an ultrasound on my neck again, and then I had a biopsy. And at this particular hospital, they actually have someone sitting in a small laboratory down, like down the corridor, so they can they can get your biopsy results within you know 10, 20 minutes. So the first set of biopsies didn't work, so they took another um, set. They kept going into the thyroid and into the lymph node that I had here. So they confirmed to me that day that I had stage three papillary follicular thyroid cancer. Um, it had gone into my lymph nodes around the left side of my neck. I did have an extra thyroidal extension going down towards the lung. And I had a very rare um, occurrence of a jugular vein invasion. So the cancerous lymph nodes had broken into my jugular vein, meaning that there was a, a vascular invasion. It was able to you know, get to the bloodstream. So that was around about 21 months ago. I can still remember every moment of that day. I remember what I was wearing. I remember exactly what I had eaten before. I remember exactly the bathroom I went into after to process it. They went straight into the recommendations for treatment. And what they wanted to do for me was an almost immediate thyroidectomy. So that would be to remove the thyroid gland. And actually with stage one thyroid cancer, that can be classed as curable. And then they wanted to go in, do a neck dissection, which is where you take out the lymph nodes. And then if necessary, they planned to remove my jugular vein as well, which is, um, and that's quite, they were going to be operating quite close to a nerve. So that was where they said my operation would probably be um, double the usual time. They then told me that it would be likely they would want me to take a good dose of radioactive iodine, and then uh, they would recheck me and decide where to go from there. So I'm gonna end the video now because today was really about sharing my diagnosis in the hopes that it could help someone else if perhaps you're 
worried you're about to get a diagnosis or if you're going through that diagnosis stage. I also hope that it helps if you're worried about some symptoms and you feel like you're not being heard. If I had listened to the six, seven, eight doctors that I went to see, I would not have got the diagnosis at the time that I did. So my advice is to be an advocate for yourself, to listen to your body and to keep going if you think there's something wrong. Back, I'm gonna be bringing you more information about what I chose to do next because spoiler alert, I did things a little bit different than advised. And I'm gonna be bringing you loads and loads of tips of ways that you can work to change your lifestyle to help heal cancer. So if you'd like to follow along with my journey or this has helped you in any way, please drop me a comment or subscribe. You can also find me over on Instagram where I share all of my journey on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for being here. I'll see you soon.